y'all, what's up? It's your girl Stephanie, and this is the best of 2017 makeup edition. We got a lot of products to run through, so before we get started, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe below, come join the sisterhood, no matter your true pronoun or gender identity, come join the family. All right, let's get into it. So this is pretty much the face that I have worn on countless occasions all throughout this year. I mean, I feel like this is a classic look that I've worn for many, many years, but I have very much perfected it in 2017. So today, I'm gonna run through all the products that I used on my face today uh, in order of how I went through it. So we're gonna jump around just a little bit, but let's start off with primer. So I have two right here. This is the Milk Makeup Blur Stick. This is the primer that I have worn the most this year. It really does help create a really nice base for all your other makeup to go on top of. It's mattifying, but not dry. Very easy to use. You just rub this stick all over your face and continue rubbing it in with your fingers. And you know, I've used this product a lot and I still have like a third of the product left to go. So not only is it effective, it is very cost effective as well. The eyeshadow primer that I've used a ton is the Too Faced Shadow Insurance, although on the tube, shadow has just completely wiped off. This thing has lasted a really, really long time. I just put a teeny dab on my finger, rub it into my eyes, and then let it go up into my eyebrows as well. And that really just helps me prevent creasing. My eyelids can get very oily. So if I don't use a primer, there's a ton of creasing happening, but it does not happen when I use this product. Before we get into more face products, the tool of the year is my Beauty Blender. This thing just does exactly what it says it's gonna do, blends in every single product so seamlessly into the face. I honestly try to go back to brushes a few times and it's just not the same. I really like how the product gets picked up by this when I dampen it and yeah, like I said, just really blends it into the face. I feel like sometimes my makeup can tend to sit on top of my face and then I get really, really oily. This somehow just makes it go in there and stay. My favorite foundation has definitely been the Too Faced Peach Perfect Comfort Matte Foundation. This is in Nude, this is quite a light foundation, but personally, I don't like to use heavy foundations. I try to get my coverage out of my concealer. So I like to put on just a nice thin layer to just even out the skin tone a bit. And this really is a comfort matte foundation. It is mattifying, but not too much, not tightening, not drying. This really helps my skin not get oily throughout the day. I think that really is the message here. I just like to find things that help prevent me from getting oily but it doesn't dry me out. The concealer that I just can't live without, I really can't top it. This is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in Custard. I toss this under my eyes, down the bridge of my nose, under my chin, on any like little blemishes, a little bit on my forehead, blend it away with my beauty blender, and it just stays all day, doesn't crease weird, doesn't dry or stick to any patches. The formula of this concealer is just perfection to me. I've definitely tried a few different concealers this year. I would like to have a variety of different concealers that I use that I like, but just nothing has been able to top this formula for me. Yeah, let me know in the comments down below what your favorite concealer is. Like I said, I do want to try different ones, but for sure, currently, this is my holy grail product. My favorite powder for baking is definitely the Laura Mercier Loose Setting Powder in Translucent. This is just a classic. There are a few other powders out there that I like, but this is just one that I keep coming back to. I just pick it up with my beauty blender, put it underneath my eyes, along my nose, forehead, under my chin. It's practically going all over my face. I'm not, you know, I'm not being shy about this powder, but once I leave it on for a few minutes, uh, it really helps just seep into my skin, prevent my makeup from moving around all day, just sets everything, really locks it in. So I don't think I'm gonna be going without this powder anytime soon. I love it. Usually when I'm baking, I'll go into my eyebrows and my eyes, so no surprise here. Anastasia Beverly Hill products are my favorite eyebrow products here. I have the Brow Wiz in Granite, as well as the Brow Duo in Granite. I will use the Brow Wiz to just go on the very edges of my eyebrows, and this just has the perfect formula. It's not too dry, not too wet. It comes off very easily, but doesn't crumble. Everything about this pencil just creates the perfect eyebrow pencil. And then I'll go in with either color of the Brow Duo. I did dark today with a little flat shader brush and I will just start filling in from the back third of the brows with the most product and then I will move towards the fronts. Usually I'll wipe up the product before I go to the very, very middle. This combination of products is just perfect for me. I've used it a ton. You know, lately I've actually only been using 
the uh, brow whiz where I'll just kind of fill it in because I feel like sometimes when I use the powder it gets a little bit too dark so I'll just do the brow whiz and just do little flicks of hair brushes so that's something I, I've been experimenting with but this look currently on my eyebrows right now is what I wore the most in 2017. I used a variety of really awesome eyeshadow palettes in 2017 so it was a little bit difficult for me to narrow it down to just one but I think this is a good choice. This is the Dose of Colors Baked Browns Palette. These colors are just so pigmented and so beautiful, easy to blend. I tend to use Deserted and Outdoorsy the most, which are the second and third colors here, as you can see. Uh, so today I used the second color. I put it onto a fluffy brush and just blended it into my crease. And then I just picked it up with a regular eyeshadow brush as well, packed it onto the eyelid, underneath the eyes, the lower lash line, and these colors are just so perfect for me. I said this before when I talked about this in my favorites, I really need to look into this company because just in this palette in itself, it's just so perfect. I love it so much that I need to look into them more. In 2017, I discovered the most perfect eyeliner that was ever created. This is the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner. I definitely didn't discover it. I was just really behind the times because I feel like a lot of people really love this product, but I just have no idea why I didn't try it till this year. I don't know how they do it. Just the perfect amount of product comes out of this pen. Every single swipe that you make, it is just built for precision. It's this super opaque black that dries down perfectly. It doesn't like dry out. It's not crumbly or anything. It doesn't spread around. Just everything about this liner is perfect. I, I really don't know how to explain to you. If you're looking for a black eyeliner, you need to look into this one. It lasts for so long, doesn't transfer on my eyes or anything. Yeah, I love, I love you. I didn't have this on my original list, but I realized these are two eye pencils that I use all the time. So first of all, I have the Marc Jacobs Highliner Gel Crayon in Blacker, and I have the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil in Torch. Everything from the Marc Jacobs like Gel Eyeliner or the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eyeliner line are so good. They last for so long. They don't transfer. They really stay in the waterline. I use blacker on my upper waterline when I do liquid liner. This just helps really blend in all the color right there. It makes it look super black and there's no weird like skin spaces, if that makes sense. And then I'll use torch on my lower waterline to just create more depth there, create a little bit more darkness. I just think using these kind of products in the waterline just adds a little bit more something and completion to eye look. The eyelash primer that I use every single day is the Lancome Seals Booster XL. I've used different brands. I've used like Dior. There's a couple other ones I've used, but this is just the one that I always go back to. You know, I very rarely wear false eyelashes. So this really does make such a difference when you're layering a mascara on top. It helps just really thicken the lashes, elongate it. I see a huge difference between my eyelashes when I use this and when I don't. So pretty much, I'll just apply it and right after I will put on my mascara. I know some people let it dry, but I find that when you let it dry, it is really not as effective for me. So for me, I like to use it when it's wet. I don't even wanna know how many of these I've gone through in the past, like, I've used this since I lived in San Francisco, since before then, so. I've gone through a lot of these. <laughs> the mascara that I just can't stay away from is the Too Faced Better Than Sex Waterproof Mascara. This stuff is just like a little eyelash miracle in a bottle. It thickens, elongates. It can get a little bit goopy sometimes, but you just have to work with it. Just be careful that there's not too much product on the brush. You can also, you know, kind of work with it and wipe it off. Once you get used to using this product, you're not gonna wanna stray away from it. This is just everything you would ever want in a mascara. And the regular formula is great as well. Uh, I just get watery eyes and I'm a crier. I definitely am. Anything that's like too happy or too sad, I'm tearing up. So I tend to uh, stick to the waterproof formulas. We have these two products right here. This is the Stila Magnificent Metals Liquid Eyeshadows. If you want a beautiful glitter eye look but you cannot stand, the mess, the fallout, all that stuff, this is it for you. This is so easy to use. I'll just take it out, put it on, and I tend to just honestly spread it out with my fingers. It dries down pretty quickly, doesn't do any like transferring too much, and it is just the most densely packed glitter 
It's so easy to use. You could do a really full on eye look like all over or you could just use them for details like in the inner eye. I just, I've used this in a variety of ways. Here I have Bronze Bell and Rose Gold Retro. I also really love the one that's just gold. I will link that one down below along with everything else. Yeah, just do yourself a favor and go get these. My favorite face product of this year, and I think this was in last year's as well, this is the Bobbi Brown Skin Weightless Powder Foundation. Here I have Beige 3. This has just been a trusty finishing powder for me for a long time. I just get a brush and spread it all over my face evenly. It just makes the skin look like porcelain. It makes your skin look so smooth. If I'm doing a no makeup day and I want to go out and just want to have like a little bit of coverage, I'll go ahead and use this just on its own as well. I've used a lot of different powders over the last few years, but I always come back to this one. My number one bronzer of 2017 was this Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow Face Sculpt and Highlighting Palette. This is the fair to medium. As you can see, this bronzer got a lot of love. I hit pan. It is just a very soft, really easy and buildable bronzer to use. I feel like sometimes you get a bronzer, it's a little bit too intense. You try to put it on, you just get a big splotch on there and then you can't blend it out. This is the complete opposite of that. It just goes on so seamlessly. Like you can blend this out in just a few seconds. Even if you loop it on there and you just go like that really fast, all of a sudden you just have this really nice contoured cheekbones. I really wanna look more into Charlotte Tilbury products because one, this formula is amazing and also the packaging is so beautiful. So if you have any favorites, let me know down below. My favorite blush is this one by Tarte. It is called Party and it is the Amazonian Clay 12 Hour Blush. It's just a really universally beautiful color. It's not too in your face. It's buildable. Blush is again one of those things where I just do not want to put too much Sometimes that happens, so this is the kind of color for my skin tone that I can really control, and even if I put a little bit too much, it's not that big of a deal. If you're looking into an easy blush to wear, I would look into this one. I feel like the highlighting game of 2017 was just a roller coaster. There were some real highs, some real, real lows, but definitely a lot of really incredible highlighters came out this year. My favorite for sure is the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Freestyle Highlighter in Chic Freak. This is a pink toned highlighter with like little gold shimmers in there. Everything about this is what I love. It's also super buildable. So if I'm doing a real light makeup day, I can just put a little on there. It's noticeable, but nothing too crazy. But if I want it to be seen, I can place it on there and you can see me from across the street, no lie. I do like the one next to it, Girl Next Door, but for me, Chic Freak is the one that I just keep coming back to. We got some lip products and then that is it. So let's start off with my favorite lip plumper of the year. This is the Glam Glow Plump Rageous Gloss Treatment in Clear. I have nothing left in this tube. I gotta get a new one, but this has just been my favorite lip plumper. It is so tingly, so minty. It lasts for a very long time does have a nice plumping effect. And after all the lip plumping effects have worn off, this just in itself is a wonderful gloss. It stays really nicely on the lips, doesn't get weird, doesn't dry out, doesn't dry out your lips at all. That's what I found from other lip plumpers is you wear it for a little while and it starts to just really affect your lips negatively. This is just really moisturizing. My lips have never been unhappy after wearing this. And sometimes, even if I couldn't find some sort of like, you know, Vaseline or lip mask, I'll just grab this and my lips end up feeling just really hydrated. The other lip gloss that I have here is from Dior Lip Maximizer Collagen Active in 002. Now this is also supposed to be a lip plumper. It is not as like tingly or crazy as the Plump Rageous, but I personally just like this more as a lip gloss. It has a really nice pink tint to it, not too much. It's just a very light sheer tint, and it is really, really glossy. This product also lasts for a really long time. It does have a nice minty tingly effect, but like I said, it doesn't last as long as this one, but I do think that this one might be more glossy. It's kind of a toss up between these two for the actual gloss. I do like both of them a lot. Maybe if you're new to lip plumpers, you could try out this one first. It's a little bit less intense, but if you really wanna go for it, if you're already seasoned, I would say 100% try out the Glam Glow. What I have on my lips right now is the NARS Power Matte Lip Pigment in Don't Stop. This liquid lipstick was a game changer for me. When I received this in the mail, I remember I tried it on for the first time and I was like, what is happening right now? It is so perfect. The doe foot applicator is quite interesting. It is pointy 
and it doesn't have that much give to be honest. It is quite stiff, but you could really get into those little corners there. You can have a lot of control with this, but I would say it is a little bit difficult to use. Like this is not the kind of product that you're gonna be applying in a car or like when you're in a rush, like you have one minute to do it. You gotta take your time with this product. But once you put it on, like I'll leave the house. I will not bring this product along with me because I know it's good. It's not going anywhere. If I'm just going to a bar, having some drinks, I'm not gonna have to reapply this. And that is just a testament to the longevity of this product. It also is matte, but does not dry out your lips. Like you can keep talking and it's so, so comfortable. I know I gotta try out different colors from this line because this is the only one that I have purchased and I just absolutely love it. The other lip product that I just wanna give a shout out to because this is not gonna be on the favorites, but it's definitely a shout out because I got it at the end of the year. This is the Fenty Beauty Stunna Lip Paint in Uncensored. This is another one of those products that I put it on and I was like, oh wow. Lip products have really come a long way in 2017. I will say the formula is quite similar. The colors are a little, little bit different. They have very different doe foot applicators though. So the Fenty one has this very round little doe foot applicator. Again though, it is stiff, so you do have control. But because it's rounded, you tend to create a rounder upper lip, but it also like hugs your lips so well. I think I spoke about this either in my November, I think it was my November favorites I spoke about this. So that's when I got this. Again, the formula is matte and comfortable. I do think that the NARS does have a bit more longevity, but I haven't really been able to test them too much side by side because I feel like a lot of times when I wore this, I'd be eating some like pizza or something. So maybe we'll have like a battle of the liquid lipsticks coming up sometime soon. But yeah, that concludes my best of 2017 makeup edition. I hope y'all enjoyed watching it. I really wore all these products so much and they're definitely gonna follow me into 2018 as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe below. Come join the sisterhood. I love y'all and I will see you in the next video. Bye.